Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gary O with the Get Some Podcast. Uh, my guest this week, I don't know where she ranks in the Wayans family. I don't know if she's a cousin, an aunt, an uncle, a niece, and I don't know because there's so many of you. Shantae Wayans. <laughs> Thank you. Now, who, who, <laughs> you. Who are you in the Wayans family tree? You know, you could have act like you knew something about me, Gary. Like, no, because <laughs> you I, just I, made I don't, me. You know, I don't trust Wikipedia anymore <laughs> because I had a guest a while back and I had um, a guy named Lord Finesse, a hip hop guy. Mm. And the Wikipedia said he was born and raised in Atlanta. And I go, so man, when'd you move to New York? He goes, motherfucker, I, I was in New York. I didn't move there from Atlanta. And I, I put a Wikipedia. Wikipedia said. Right, right. So I go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to ask the guest because I don't want to look stupid again. I'm going to be like, yeah. So Shantan's Marley's sister. <laughs> no, I ain't. Well, it says, it actually says Nadia is my mom. And my mom like curses Wikipedia out every time. But my mother is a sister, so I'm a niece. And You're I'm, Marlon's niece. Yes, I thought you was going to say daughter. I was like, no. No, I just no, no. I know you're not his daughter. No, no, no. I, I'm his niece. I'm all of their nieces. My mother is within that whole 10, 10 kids. Which and where is your mom in the Wayans? Because is Keenan the oldest? Now he is. My, my uncle Dwayne was the oldest. He passed away a few years ago. That's right. Sorry about so, that. So, no, it's okay. All right. It was 20 years ago. I, yeah. I, I forgot. I cried it out. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it just got dark. <laughs> Um, that up. <laughs> so, I think my mom is like the almost like the middle, or maybe the uh, yeah. I think she's like the middle. And your mom is not in entertainment. No, she can't at all. She can't. She cursed Steven Spielberg out. Like, Why? Because she doesn't care. Back in the day, she when she she lived out in California for a while, and she was working on set. She was doing like writer's assistant work, mm-hmm. and she was coming in the lot. And uh, Steven Spielberg, <laughs> everyone's driving in. She was like, get the fuck out the way, motherfucker. For real. And I was like, mom, <laughs> that's, that's. <laughs> this was before E.T.? Or after E.T.? <laughs> after E.T. Because before E.T., you can kind of cuss Steven no, Spielberg no, no. out. This, was, this one, he had his uh, small car <laughs> and he was just, you know, on a lot. No, this is after. And she just went off on the just lot. Just went off. I was like, mom, that's Steven Spielberg. She's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I was like, you can't. <laughs> that's why the alien left anyway. <laughs> Ugly ass I didn't even like his movies. Go Mom, home, bitch. Up. Go home. <laughs> Go home, bitch. So, before you got on set, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you're here, honestly. But I'm a diehard. You don't even like sports, do you? I do like sports. No, Listen, I, I was on an all boys basketball team in sixth grade. No, you. Okay, I'm and, just and you. <laughs> Yes, I was. That's what no, I knew. You? <laughs> the only girl. <laughs> but I, I listen. Monday Night Football was this week, and I am a die hard Cincinnati. You know I'm from Cincinnati, right? Yeah. You been there? You been the Funny Bone? Yeah. You like Cincinnati? I do. It's a good city. We got Starbucks. It's we got Target. <laughs> oh no, that's not Toledo. Toledo is the the one where there's nothing. Toledo is the club. I'm actually there New Year's Eve. That's funny you bring I up Toledo. I love the club. Way it's to pump the, me. The Way play- to throw the lob, Shantae. Well, no. What are you talking about? That's great promotion. The only thing going on there is Gary Owens. Oh, it's already sold out. Oh, okay. Well, great. Hold on. It's sold out, <laughs> but the club's only seating like 120 <laughs> right. because of social distance. So it's like this. Yeah, it's sold out both <laughs> shows. <laughs> Damn. 250 coming to see you? Yeah. Why All paid, no paper. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't y'all do like eight shows then? I'm there all weekend. Right. So we, um, I guess Ohio right now, <laughs> the uh, liquor laws, the, every, everything has to be shut down at 10. It's going to be a weird New Year's because I got one show at 6, then another show at 8, and then I got to be done by 10. And I guess you just hang out, I, I don't know, in the parking lot Until, with the crowd? This, this is what kills me. They have all these rules and restrictions but still serve liquor. When liquor and drugs are involved, no one follows anything. Facts. So go ahead to 10 o'clock. Go on New Year's <laughs> Eve. On New Year's Eve. And, no one's going to care. And what cop is going to put you in jail? Right. <laughs> like what cop is literally going to show up and be like, that's it, everybody, round them up? Or are they... St- or they shut up. As Sorry, we that. film in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> so have you done? Have you done the the new? Uh, well, it's not new now. It's like seven years old. The Funny Bone in in Cincinnati, the Liberty Township one. How how uh, long has it been up? I think it's been open six seven years now. Oh yeah yeah yeah, I've done that. 
You like that room, Cincy? I, I love all of them. I like, um, I forget his name. Is it Jason? The, J- uh, is he the GM there? Yeah, I think so. With Jason Kutosh? Is that the guy? Oh, they be know. sticking and moving you gonna managers. Bring, you gonna bring the last name? Oh, in. I sorry. Don't know that. <laughs> There's two of them, but I I like I I do like those. I never got to headline those. Those are like, aren't they like four hundred seaters, mm-hmm. four or five hundred? Who? You, well, when you're on the road and you're featured, who who you on the road with the most? You think? Oh, now I haven't been with them in a while, but I was doing a lot with Marlon. Marlon would go out any well, that's day, weird. any time. That's weird. Why is that weird? You're, you're with Marlon. Yeah, I mean, you and these Wayanses, man. I ran into <laughs> I ran into you uh, at at the airport with him. Oh, you that's right. Yeah, I was remember? in I was Baltimore. I think so. And and there was a guy who was trying to. It was a guy with his son trying to get a picture, and he kept following Marlon around. That's so weird. To and me. And I I was like like literally followed him to the bathroom, and I was cursing him out. That's right. I yeah. remember that. Yeah, because you you were like Gary said, man, I should have you as my buddy. No <laughs> shit, you went off, because, dude. A, a grown. When you see a grown man doing this in front of a child. Trying to get like autographs, like you know what you're doing. If you're a fan, go buy a ticket and then you can ask this type of stuff. Yeah. Or way to get in the middle of a conversation. Cause I remember me and Marlon was talking and it was like, dis- it's complete disregard of our car. Con- we don't know what we're talking about. Doesn't care. And just comes in with his own agenda. Yeah. I hate it when they bring a kid involved. The kid didn't even know who my uncle yeah. was. <laughs> He was just like my dad's. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sure. That's right. I remember the kid came up. Yeah. Hey, I don't know who's who, <laughs> but I like remember I you was you. going all over the Baltimore airport. You just don't do that. It was it was early too. It was yeah. Early. We uh, because I remember we were on a red eye and the layover was in Detroit, and I remember I I saw Marlon in line. And then I came up behind him. Hey, man, can yeah. I get a picture? He, went, he gave me the fan. What? Oh, yeah. what's up, man? <laughs> no, they do it all the time. Cops try to be funny with it. It's like, bro, you know what's happening. And they're like, hey, you're under arrest. Just kidding. Yeah. You're like, no. oh, fuck. Wow, that was funny. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't do that. You don't yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, how long have you been doing stand up? I've been doing it probably 15 plus now. Is that just like, do you, is this like Christmas time? Is it just a Christmas party? And the, what's, what is a Christmas in the Wayans household when Shantae's like, I'm going to do stand up? Well, before they had kids, you know, because after they had kids, the holidays got shorter. Mm-hmm. Like we weren't, <laughs> there wasn't so many gifts and stuff. Dude, I couldn't imagine. They, <laughs> it was too the, many of us. The, the f- mom and dad of the Wayans, yeah. like, Christmas had to suck. No, it There's was so many kids. They, they they started doing like double ups. So it'd be like, hey Gary, you and me, we're gonna go get these gifts for this crowd, and you know, blah blah blah. They start. I'm, talk, I'm talking about when they were little. Oh yeah, we were. What poor. is it? Ten, my eleven. My grandma kids? and grandpa stayed poor oh, yeah, until sorry. they got famous. So yeah. there was, and then my grandfather's Jehovah's Witness. So there were no celebrations. Oh god. You guys had to well, you, make. Well, let me just say your this. Toys. Marlon's making up for it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Ab- he is out. Marlon doing- is making up right. for all those non gifted Christmases. <laughs> right, right, right. Can't right. speak on Damon and Keenan and even Sean, but I know Marlon's making Marlin up for that shit. Marlon is. He's living the life right now. You, you ain't like, lying. Are you, what COVID state are you in right yeah. now? <laughs> <laughs> Going to Mexico. That's right. what everybody does. It's like co- Atlanta, Houston, even Florida. But Mexico, there's no COVID, right. by the way. No, I just feel like he's trying. To, he's like, where can I go to catch it? He's going to every place. Have you had it yet? I probably did. Oh, I had it. And I was a super spreader. I gave it to everybody in my career. How long? <laughs> <laughs> and you, I felt, did you know? That's like herpes. That's like passing out herpes. Oh, yeah. Well, what happened was like, I don't know where I caught it, but I, you know, the incubation period is anywhere between four and 14 days. So I was touring. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I was like, man, I don't feel right. And then I warned everybody. I said, I don't feel right, so I'm going to get back. And got back positive. And then everybody, one by one, ding, ding, ding. Everybody was in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> just started feeling the symptoms. Oh, just... my God. And everybody got it worse than me. I was the one that just, like, it ran through me and I was fine. Yeah, yeah. Everybody else was, like, fucked up. <laughs> but they said, so did anybody go to the hospital? No, nobody went to the hospital. I feel like if you don't go to the hospital, because I know, I was just having this conversation. I know a lot of people who went to the hospital, they all wind up dead. Everybody who just has to stay home and deal with it, they've been surviving. Well, I called um, I called Romney Malco. I called a girl named Margot Bingham. 
I called everyone that I had worked with that was healthier than me, that I know is like, because you know, there's people in this business that are ate up right. with their health and their body. Right. So I called them. I said, as soon as March happened and everything shut down, I said, what should I be taking? Everything. And they both gave me all this shit. And I would some have my. Sea moss, some black Everybody seed said sea moss, but nah. <laughs> Romney said um, oil of oregano. Yeah. Mix that in with some uh, apple cider vinegar and something to dilute the taste. Yeah. Any kind of flavoring, and then uh, of course vitamin D and everything else. But I think that's why when it hit me, I wasn't that bad. Oh, that's rude. That's how, that I sounds like a my grandma. Oh, recipe. they're calling me about the Bengals game. <laughs> oh, who, who, the they who? want me to go this week to Houston. Maybe I will. Maybe <laughs> you don't know shit about football. I, I think everyone gets tickets to that. I think I no, just got COVID. invited. It's COVID. You got to be real Bengals special game. to go into a game right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's COVID. <laughs> It's like getting on In Living Color right. and you're not a Wayans. <laughs> not everybody can do it. <laughs> Yo, who is who are Bengals? It's the Cincinnati Bengals. They, I'm so mad at you, Shanta. You don't even like football? Why don't you just adopt the Bengals as your squad? No, I like I would go for the Chargers before. Why would you the go Bengals? for the Chargers? Because that was the first team I watched when I watched football. But you don't know I'm anything loyal. about them right now. You're loaded nothing. I do know. What do you know about the Chargers? Who's your quarterback? You better know the quarterback. Blue, gray, Who's the quarterback? They got white, a great um, young quarterback. Yeah, it's um, oh, what's that guy's name? Herbert. What? You can't help. Motherfucker. What are you talking? I was I was saying her, and he was like, Herbert. Oh God! First of all, the Bengals look like they actually play on this field. What's like, wrong with that? The, no, just this thing. That thing is a has a Bluetooth no one, speaker. <laughs> no <laughs> one. And the no, ball's floating, and look, it turns. <laughs> Watch this, watch this. <laughs> is, that a, <laughs> is that a college? Oh, fucking. Okay, well, this is a great episode. It's going to be the shortest one yet. Yeah, this 15-minute episode. Fucking Shantae, told- the second niece, third cousin, <laughs> claiming, <laughs> claiming she's Wikipedia first generation. Me. Wikipedia <laughs> me. So how many, how many weigh-ins are doing stand-up? Who? Ah. Uh, Cause let's let's go through the list. There's Damon Jr. Well, D- Damon Jr. Damon. Well, so uh, who were, were doing it? So Big Damon, Keenan, Sean, Marlon, uh, Kim did it for a little while. Damon Jr. Me, uh, Keenan's son, Keenan Jr. He's doing stand up. Yeah, and he it's so cute because he doesn't care. Like he he has the the courage that everybody wish they had when they started. Like he, mm. he, when his first time doing it, Mom was Sean let him do stage time. He was supposed to do three minutes. So where did he He did Uncle like Sean? 10. I'll just <laughs> he, say, give a fuck about the time. We're like lighting him and stuff. <laughs> he's bombing and we're like, he's <laughs> like, and then. <laughs> Hold on. When you say we're lighting him or you just at somebody's house? The no. <laughs> Yeah, like, like, we're just at the crib. There's enough Wayans. We create our own audience. Like, literally, the Wayans could have their own tour with literally, family members and pack the club. Literally. <laughs> you don't need nobody else. With, <laughs> with the family that we know, for real. You know what, what it, uh, the ones. Kevin did this special in his living room. Oh, I was like, yeah. the Wayans could do that, and it could be in a fucking theater. <laughs> with just the family. Are you at the Staples with Center with the, Wayans? That's the best open mic night because you. Uh, Here's what's dope and bad about it. So, like, at family functions, the crazy thing is everybody tries to outdo each other. So somebody mm. would start a joke, and then somebody would do impersonations, and then they just keep, like, trying to outdo each other. Whoever, it's always one. Always one that chimes to try, chime in, and then they get silence, and then there's this Wayne's laugh that everyone does that explodes. So we all have this, like, high octave, like, ah! So, so when like, you bomb, <laughs> she's right looking at you. You you get like three seconds of that, and mm. then it's just like this explosion of different laughters. It's amazing. Who would you say is the funniest in the family at the Christmas party? Not on stage, like that's cause... that's the hard thing. Uh, so Craig is hilarious. That's my cousin. Oh yeah, Craig. You I got Craig? I got some Craig stories. Yeah, Craig is brilliant. Little Damon. And then the uncles just like I said, they outdo each other. Even Keenan. Keenan is probably like he's the hidden jewel because you don't expect him to do stuff, and then he'll he'll be watching everybody and then come with the the punch at the end. See, Keenan Keenan reminds me of the uh, 
the old player at the club with the fried fish <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the French fries right here with the cigar. Right. And all, all the youngsters are coming up and going, hey, Mr. Keenan. He's like, go and get some fried fish, baby girl. <laughs> I think everybody's looking for Keenan's approval. Right, right. It is. I, he's the godfather. We called him the godfather. Yeah. I mean, he's the godfather, not just to the weigh-ins. But Black Hollywood, yeah. he's he's Mount Rushmore. No, he's as far as opportunities for people. Man, it just just alone, like when I when I shot my special, I went back to him. He was like punching up my stuff, and I was like, I wish that I came over to like do this. Is that the that the one with Tiffany? Or yeah, own? yeah, the Netflix. No, 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 it was the uh, Netflix special. How, now, how did that come up? Tiffany just called a bunch of friends of hers yeah tiffany um you know she's been rocking with me for a minute and uh she hit me up and was like you know what would you do for this and i was like anything but sell my soul <laughs> and <laughs> and she just it was a great number you know mm -hmm. something that we we would never get if we went out on our own yeah and she hit us up and then like a month later the deal came and that was uh Everyone got 30 minutes, or was it? Yeah, 30 minutes. So technically it was like 20-something. 20, 20 and then it was like two an episode, right? Two yeah. different people an episode? No, no, no. Was, so, everybody got so, their own 30? Yeah, their own 30. So Netflix? it's six episodes on the uh, They Ready thing. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Tiffany's good at just like not forgetting about the, I don't want to say struggling comics, but comics that the doors aren't open yet. No. And it, she'll like put people on that like was open micing and rocking with her back in the day. Tiff Tiffany gave opportunity, like, we didn't have to change much about ourselves. We didn't have, when I say much, you know, the network likes to get in and maybe you should do this joke, maybe you should change it around. And Tiffany was just like, what do you want to do? Like, for me, my background, I wish somebody took over and was like, nah, we're going to, we're going to give you something else. Because I picked this background in my head, I thought it was amazing and I could have came up with something else. But other than that, she allowed all of us to be us. And just mm -hmm. go for it. It was like if you fell, you fell on you, you know, <laughs> with what you wanted to do. And it was all over the place. That yeah. the girl she picked, <laughs> she was she a Flame Monroe? Flame she Monroe, you. Tracy, Ashley, April, Macy, Sexy Marlo, and uh, Ida Rodriguez. And Ida, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, you had you had straight. You had lesbian. You had, uh, you had trans, trans, or black, she, white, we, yeah. Dirty. Yeah. You yep. had everything. Yep. Marlo's just LA hood. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Mar when Marlo, I, I remember just every time I used to see Marlo when I was out on the scene a little more in LA, I go, God, she is LA yeah. through and through. Yeah. Swap meet, sloth. Like if yeah. you didn't know LA, you, would, uh, you I've seen some people like we're visiting, they go, what the fuck is she talking about right, right now? <laughs> That's L.A. South of 10, right. you bitches ain't coming down there like this. South of 10 what? Right, right, right. 10 people? <laughs> South of 10. But that's that's what was dope about everything. She really she really gave back. I always I always admire stuff like that because I go, like for me, there's loyalty in it. Like I always, you know, if I had a project or anything like that and, and she was accepting of it, I would always go to her. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's It's like you're building an empire still making money off of people that you... Looked out for. You got any horror stories from the road? The the horror stories are the best stories. I was telling somebody the other day, like, uh, no, I had Sydney Castillo on last week. Yeah. And we were talking about when you have, like, something shitty happen to you on the road. Like, Marlon told me he got ripped off at a club. Yeah. The, and the guy put a gun on the oh, I was table there. to sell. Oh, you was there? I was there. You didn't go off that day. No, no, no. Oh, hell no. <laughs> but, but I was trying to get him to come, like, let's leave. Like, Marlon had three shows that night. We didn't leave the club. We didn't leave the comedy club until like one something, and the the actual club I think ended at like two or three. You know, you gotta do your forty five minutes to an hour, and it was mm -hmm. the funniest thing because we get there, and it felt like uh, what's that game? It was like it was. <laughs> you just saw him like being like pushed everywhere in the club. Marlon. Yeah, because they was like taking pictures, but it wasn't a gang of people there at the time. Um, mm -hmm. So he just was like getting shifted through the whole club and then they had us on this little stage and they gave him this like bottle and was like, all right, come on, take these pictures. And then we'll, as we were walking out, the guy was like, so you know, uh, you know, I took care of you, right? And it was like, he was the security guard saying that. It was the scariest thing ever. He had a gun out? He had a gun. He he put the gun on, uh, I think the, the, what's it called? The glove compartment uh, console? Mm-mm-mm. Mm -hmm. Listen, y'all don't want to walk around with bodyguards. <laughs> I don't have no bodyguards. 
that's, just, but that's some scary stuff. Yeah, I, I don't buy. I just leave. I run. Do you go? Do you do the club stuff? Uh, not as much as I used to. The only time I do like nightclub appearances now, I have to have history with the, the promoter because I almost got, I almost got uh, taken a little bit last time I was in Houston. Yeah. Um, have you worked with Chanel? He's doing all the the pop up comedy series right now. No, no, no. I don't know if Marlon's on any dates with him or not. He's he's a good promoter. He's somehow he got tied in with Fifty Cent now. He's doing a lot of the Branson mm. cognac parties. Mm -hmm. But he's a good promoter. So he and his he booked a, a after party in Houston during COVID. By the way, <laughs> and I was like this, and I thought, okay, there's got to be some socially distanced stuff. Right. No. No. <laughs> there wasn't. If you had a mask on, it's like, what's the problem? Right. Why, why you right, got a mask right, on? I was like, right. oh. Well, I already had it, so my immune system's you, good, I think. You're all Hollywood wearing right. masks and stuff. <laughs> so while we were there, this other guy was like, yo, I want Gary to come to my spot tomorrow. And he was talking about decent money to come through. And I was like, I'm talking to my opener. Do you know, you know Say M? No. A little Asian dude? I'm sure you know him if you saw him. I'm horrible with names, Gary. Stop he's a little, he's a little Cambodian names. dude. That opens up for me a lot. <laughs> he's like, yo, this guy you know, got some money. And I was like this, all right. And then I went, who is the guy? And then sure enough, the couple people that I know was like, don't, don't go to that, don't go to that club, don't go to that part of town. Good luck. Right, right. You better get all your money up front. Right. Uh, like I don't if I do club appearances now, I don't walk in till I have all the money. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? I might get the money and then go back to the hotel, drop it off, and then come back. I'm not even gonna take a chance yeah, with it in my yeah, pocket. Yeah. You, you just know what bring I mean? Your ID. Yeah. Just the ID. <laughs> I've uh I, I think my one of my worst things always has to deal with like um I did this show it was a herb, it was called Urban something and the guy won didn't he kept trying to not send me my deposit so there's always a thing like he had this thing where he wanted to it said video recording and stuff like that I said I don't want my stuff recorded so we got into this whole thing about that he was telling me he's trying to uh uh put together something to go sell. And I said, you can't take people's material and go sell this. You got to get permission and stuff. So we had this whole big back and forth thing. I told him to send it through Zelle, you know, and all this stuff. So he was like, I don't know Zelle. I could send it through uh, PayPal, like some old school shit. And I, I was like, Zelle. right, I don't trust. I was like, what are you It's not in person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust Zelle. Yo, all this stuff. So I get there. I'm not the headliner. Um, I was already, you know, kind of whatever about the money, but I went there, I landed, and then the guy was taking me, he's like, oh, I got to drop off these tickets. So he took me to go give these tickets to someone who purchased it, and then the guy was like, uh, why you ain't out in these streets promoting the, the tickets? I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so, so I'm the promoter? Right. So like, the, it, it was the thing, because of my last name, Earthquake was the headliner, and there was some other people, and he, I went to go do radio. And so all this stuff that I was doing, I was like, this is not, y'all supposed to have this guy do all this stuff. And if he's not doing it, I know it's BS. We get to the show, everybody, before we even got on stage, this dude go, yo, go get your money. Go get your money. So I went, got my money. They was like, we ain't go, you know, uh, screw you, all this stuff. And then uh, the last bit of it, because I had to sign the contract, was his daughter walked in without knowing. And she was like, dad, I got, uh, I got it filmed. And I, I, it was just mm -hmm. like, yeah, so she recorded the thing. It, it wasn't sellable, but she recorded it, and it was just like, but those are like my kind of stories because I'm always getting caught up and like what using city the was last this? name. Uh, Florida. What city? And you said state? I think, I th oh. Jesus Christ, Shantae. Hey, bingo. <laughs> Still spinning That's in Cincinnati. the air. Hey. That's a city in Ohio. Bingo. Hey, what city, Shantae? It's, it's Florida. <laughs> Is, oh. <laughs> is OJ playing on your team this year, huh? Uh, it was, uh, I think, Nap not Naples. Uh, what are the cities in Florida? Well, you got Miami, nah. Jacksonville, Fort Myers. When you say Naples, I'm I thinking think it Fort was, Myers. Uh, Fort Myers, I yeah. think so. Isn't it funny, and you're in this business, it's the promoters that haggle over the least amount of money yeah. are the biggest headaches. Yeah. When you get there and everything else, it's... Oh, it, to this day, I try not. Um, thank God, I, I've had those. I went through like everybody that right. stage of your career where you're just trying to get work, and you're just like, you work with kind of any promoter, yeah, really, yeah, in the beginning, yeah. and it's always the one. And even today, every now and then, I'll, I'll work with a new promoter. You know, 
Eight times out of ten, it's smooth, but then every now and then you get that one, you're like this. You just, yeah. Or they're looking for excuses why, if it ain't selling like they think, or they don't realize uh, black shows sell more last minute. Yeah, yeah. They think, I'm going to put the name up, and we're going to have this pre-sale code yeah. with $10 yeah. off. Like, no. Yeah. And somebody explained about black audiences, and it, did, and it made the most sense. It's like, the reason black audiences sell late is when they hear the promotions in their brain, black women especially, they're like, I'm going. Yeah. But, okay, I still got eight weeks. So right. six weeks out, I'm getting my shoes. Right, right, Four right. weeks out, I'm getting my dress. Two weeks out, I'm putting the money aside for my nails and right, my hair. The right. last thing they buy is the tickets yep, themselves. Yep. And they, that's why it's always last minute. I got to make sure I'm seen. Right, right. Ah. You know what I mean? Is that, is that or I don't believe it. They're not I coming? I, I don't believe they're coming. Because you always get like promotions that's like, yo, we got such and such and such. And it's always the replacement of you might oh, when have you get one the, of the um, artists. <laughs> when you get the things on the ticket subs, it says artists are subject to change without yeah, notice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, but y'all couldn't even get in the same <laughs> level? <laughs> that's the worst. I have, uh, I have one that topped that. But I remember, uh, damn, I don't know if it was Chicago. Or, or See, Chicago's a city. Yeah. <laughs> was it the city of Illinois? No, no. <laughs> don't fuck up. Don't fuck up my magnet. <laughs> you know how long it took me to get that thing to flow? Yo, this is, if you ever want to see, if magnet. you ever want to see Gary punch somebody, <laughs> don't fuck up my magnet. This is it took me an hour to get that bitch floating. <laughs> I got my superpowers. You got your superpowers. <laughs> the Jupiter and Saturn, dude. <laughs> I went to one city and the dude uh, had me fly out on a buddy pass. And I didn't know until I got there. Uh, but I get to the city. I'm, I, he hasn't even sent me my deposit. And I'm asking for my deposit. I'm in the hotel. The show is uh, that night, I think. The show got canceled. Not only did it get canceled, but there was locks on the door because he hadn't paid rent for the place. <laughs> hey. He's, you know what he was doing? He was <laughs> banking on ticket sales. To How pay everybody. with the uh, with the doors locked? He thought maybe there'll be a the presale would be crazy, and he thought uh, you know, I guarantee you he probably owed money. Bruh. Was the whole building just shut down, or was it that night? It, it was, was no, it was the building it was shut it was, down. It was like a eviction. They had it boarded up. Oh, he, with might, the, he um, might he might just hustled everybody. Bro, but why would he do that? I, I have no idea. So I did get my deposit, but I didn't get the rest of the money, and then I, I had to figure out how to get home. God damn. Wasted a whole a whole time. How long ago was this? Oh, this had to be like six, seven years ago. That's the worst. It, I think every... But those are the best stories. Yeah, I always say that. The, 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 you to, know the boring story, Shantae? <laughs> is, yeah, me and Marlon was at the Toledo Funny Bone, and everybody laughed, and right. it was fun. The hotel was nice. You're like, this it was great. This story they put me sucked. in a suite. Right. The story sucked. <laughs> they gave me everything I asked Yeah, for. I had a coffee maker. It was great. And then I went down to the uh, pantry, and what? the front desk didn't even, didn't even charge me for the Oreos. Right. Didn't charge me. It was crazy. That's a horrible story. I left her ticket. That's a, <laughs> That's a horrible story. The good stories are the ones where the promoter rips you off. Bro. Where was uh, I was in, um, let's make it about me. Let me just story top. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it the worst? You tell a story He's and somebody like, disregards it. Right. Great story, Sean. Right. Let me top that. No, but I, I like, I don't know. They make the... The reason I wanted the podcast is to peel back the curtain of yeah. what comedians go through on the road. Yeah. Because people, p did you ever see the, there was a documentary and it was, it was the most accurate one I'd seen on comedians. I can't remember the name of it. Theo Vaughn was in it and he, they were just talking about the shitty hotels you go through and sometimes the promoters will try to double you up, mm -hmm. put you both in the same mm -hmm. room. One time I went to New Orleans and the guy, what happened was he promoted this show at the Praline Connection, which is a restaurant, I guess, yeah. in New Orleans. And he wanted to do once a month. He was like, I just want to do once a month comedy shows. And I was supposed to just headline. And then all of a sudden, whoever the headline, the host didn't show up. Like, all these people didn't show up. Yeah. It ended up being a one-man show. Yeah. So I did like an hour and a half, and it was packed. So he got greedy. He goes, y'all think I want to go to once a week? I said, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would stick it once a month. Right. You don't want to oversaturate. Right. He goes, nah, man, I know the market. New Orleans is starving. We ain't got a comedy club. And he wanted me to come in and become the host now. He goes, I'll just use your name as the host. Uh, so I came in. The first, the first show was packed, but he had time to promote and everything. Yeah. 
When I came back a couple weeks later, when he rushed it, about half full. Right. He said, uh, I said, I would do every other week. So he, he works with me. When the third time he came in, the same thing happened. I landed. He's not there to pick me up. He's not answering the phone. Uh, I have no hotel. He basically right. just left me because I guarantee it just was going. Yeah, yeah. And I was trying to tell him, dude, if you just did once a month, You'd have been, been fine, good. and you could have got good headliners. That way, you're only looking at twelve headliners you got to find for the year. Yeah, he rushed that shit. Yeah, and he wasn't trying to book anybody else. He was trying to book locals, me, host, and locals. This was like 18 years ago, but I, that last, that last, you want to talk about empty feeling when you get off the plane and, and reality kicks in? There, like, right. oh, this motherfucker is right. But he was doing what that um, promoter did. You said was taking you around doing yeah, press. Yeah. First time I came in, this fucker had me a church's chicken signing autographs. <laughs> church's fucking chicken in the hood. They love like, you then, man. Oh my, he goes. That's your, that's your audience. <laughs> this is what he said, too. He was like this. Yo, Gary, see, I don't look at it like, I don't I don't work with people. They family. When you when you with me, and we breaking bread. Breaking bread is a kiss of death to me with promoters. Right, right. When they say, let's break bread, I'm like right. this. Oh. Right. <laughs> you mean let me make you a lot of bread, right, but you don't. Right. You give me a small right, piece. Right. You're taking most of the right. loaf. I'll I'm always, getting the heels. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll always meet people like that, and it's never even in an actual comedy club. It's always like a bar or something like that. That they're like they got these big dreams and all these things. Yo, we could sell tickets for like hundred and fifty dollars. This is what they get. You like nobody. Is gonna buy those tickets. At <laughs> like, all. Yo, it's VIP. They get to meet you. <laughs> We're gonna be a Smokey's right. Bar and Grill. <laughs> they got nice. Li- you like no, bro. People don't realize like there's only few a few comics. Chappelle, uh, Kevin, Chris, where they can kind of go anywhere and sell tickets. Yeah, I mean, look yeah, what yeah. Dave's doing right now. Yeah, he's at a fucking place called Stubbs Barbecue in Austin, Texas, recording albums. And it's a it's a it's a barbecue restaurant that they usually have little live bands and they, there's outdoor seating. And basically, Dave said, "I just want to get out the cold for a couple of months." <laughs> I was like, That's, what the fuck, man? He, he did didn't he do Atlanta too? He he, well, he did uptown. Atlanta Comedy Theater. Yeah, That's yeah, when he was yeah. getting ready for SNL. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But even like that whole um, uh, Chappelle summer camp. Did, we, did you go to that? Did you no. get a chance? No, no, no. It was that was like I said. It was kind of like our Woodstock, where you're in a field. And they, nobody else could do that. I don't think anybody else could pull it off but Chappelle in Yellow Springs, Ohio, like that. Yeah. Get all them headliners coming in for no money. I, I think those are, that's dope. I just, I don't like being around levels like that because you feel so little. Like, if, if that's the only time where I'd be like, hey, uncle, oh. <laughs> could we go? <laughs> you want to be with Keenan? I just, yeah, it's like because you're so, like, it's when it's so many big people around, like, your credits start to really oh. not matter. It's like, can we bring some of the people that yeah, haven't had a Netflix? You're definitely small fish <laughs> in a big ass aquarium. <laughs> like, just a little fucking guppy. <laughs> oh, there's a shark. Like, hey, that's my uncle, <laughs> guys. You know, because <laughs> my grandpa and grandma <laughs> fucked, <laughs> and then they made Keenan. Yeah, and then they fucked again and made that's my mom. The- <laughs> Yo, I've met Dave Chappelle five times, and every time he meets me, he doesn't know me. He's like, he he remembers after, he'll be like, like he'll say, how was the crowd, or something like that, or he'll bring something up, and I'll be like, oh, they're good. And then he'll be like, so how long you been doing stand-up? I'll be like, Dave, I was at your house. <laughs> it's like, fuck, another way <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I It's the same reaction every time, but I was in your place. In Yellow Springs? Yeah. I yeah. got a, I got pulled over right behind him. What? And they were like, "You going like to the Dave? cops?" Yes. He got pulled over. No, I did. But how are you Which behind was Dave? Ridiculous. You were on, you were following him to the because, house. Because yeah, Sean and I did a show and at the Beaver Creek, the Dayton Funny Bone. Yeah, the Dayton Funny Bone. And so Dave found out. He calls Sean and goes, "Meet me at this bar." So we're like, "Well, where is it?" And he's like, "Look for the freeway. When you see the gas station, get off." And come, we're like, what is the address? (laughs) So it took us like an hour and a half to find this place, but we finally find it. Uh, Hung out, you know, we're drinking and stuff like that. I think I didn't drink that night. And then I followed him and I got pulled over. And the cops let you go? Yeah. Well, yeah, he was like, are you going to Dave's? I was like, yeah. But I was turning the corner. I was trying to stay. Was you at a bar or was you at his, his bar? 
That little party shack he's it, got. It, it's probably the party shack. Yeah. It, it looked like, I mean, it was pretty much closed down. It was probably like his that. party shack. Yeah. That's his shit. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. He's got, it's the weirdest thing, man. Like he's trying to, he's basically buying Yellow Springs right now. They just got announced today. He bought like the firehouse. He's going to turn it into a comedy club Damn. in Yellow Springs. Damn. But when, when I did summer camp, he kept trying to convince me to move there. He's like, Gary. Where, where you at right now? I said, well, I'm, I got a place in Northern California, and I, I got a place in Ohio still. He goes, why don't you sell the place in Ohio? <laughs> he's oh, he dope here, man. He was trying to really sell. He goes, I, and he told me he was on. He goes, I'm trying to get everybody to get a place here. Yeah. But I was like, he's really I, – I I just read it today. He bought this old firehouse. He's going to turn it into a comedy club. And then they started talking about all this other property property he's bought in Yellow Springs. But nobody knows really knows what he's doing with the properties. And I go this. I go, he's trying to make his own little encompassed world yeah, out there. Yeah. for Because if it's, it's almost like Keenan. When Keenan called me to do Little Man, it was funny. You can't say no when you're on the phone yeah, with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Gary. Like, like, I said yes and didn't negotiate. It's like, it was like this. Yeah. yeah bet, right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I don't know how much money, I don't even know where I'm staying. <laughs> and then uh, when we did Little Man, Tracy Morgan was telling me the same thing. He goes, hey, Gary, <laughs> Gary, how much money are you losing doing this movie? I go, what do you mean? He goes, he goes yo, Keenan fucking called. And the same thing, he goes, I didn't even fucking negotiate. I go, I didn't either. I go, he just, but it's, there's some people, if, let me tell you something. If Jamie Foxx calls you, if Dave Chappelle calls you, if right. Keenan calls you, you just say yeah. yeah. You just want to work with them. You're going to be like. And then, uh, <laughs> then afterwards, you're like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> right, right. You're like, I can move to Yellow Spring. I, uh, yeah. It's he, a good place dude, for my children. My mother had me on Zillow. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, like, oh, these shit's $20,000? Oh, can my get God. 40s. This Yellow Spring, they, right, sh- they right, shit right. here. <laughs> Are you not doing it? Uh, You're not no, I'm, I'm not saying I won't because I only live 20 He's minutes. I mean, call I, you again. You're like, I'm packed. I'm I packed. got a place. My my apartment is 20 minutes from Yellow Springs right now because I'm on the outskirts of Cincinnati. So I'm like, it wouldn't be nothing. But I ain't gonna lie. They call me like this. All right, dude. <laughs> All right. He just has a. That's why you said when you say when you're around them, you yeah. feel like a small fish. There's some of those people, man. When you get around them, you see, you get why they are who they are. Because they just suck. It's not about, I mean, he is brilliant on stage. But yeah. just when you're around him, like, look at Bradley Cooper. Yeah. He couldn't get enough of Chappelle. Yeah. He was like, almost like his groupie. Right. Wherever right, Dave right. was, Bradley wanted to be around right, him. Right, right. And then when you're with him, like this, oh, because it just makes you feel so welcome. <laughs> it's, it's a different power. It's like, uh, I, I'll tell you, when I did get to go to his place, I literally, like, dressed like this and all, <laughs> I was making him tea. I was like, making them, I felt like like all the feminine came out of me, oh, yeah. and I was like, I hey, want dick. dick, yeah, I want dick tonight. <laughs> Whoa! I was like, Whoa, I was like you want a massage? <laughs> like anything I could do for you, just let me know. I was cooking. <laughs> like it was the weirdest freaking thing got, to me ever. You got around all your girlfriends. How I, was it? I I fucked the guy. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, they Shante! Were they, they were like, that was Dave Chappelle. Yeah, yeah. You get it? You, you still There's gay. There's all passes. You still gay. Oh, I'm fucking, I'm telling you, if I ever get a chance to do Kamala Harris, right. oh, I'm jumping on. That's the vice president. And I'm not, I'm, I'm going to call president? my wife right before. I'm like this, look, it's about to go down. Right. I'll call you when we're done. Right. What is she like? Make sure you do that thing. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> uh, my wife will want details. Details. Right. <laughs> I was like this. <laughs> She's left-handed. I never knew that. <laughs> She's left-handed. Did she go have the Tim's on? Yeah. <laughs> You're right to come on. Yeah. Hey, could you put the Tim's on, please? Right. <laughs> I just want to make it real thuggish. Right, right, right. <laughs> there's, there's always a power, though, um, meeting certain people. I remember getting tickets. This is after, like, Michael Jackson was going through trial and all this stuff. It was, like, his last days, kind of. Uh, but I got tickets to go to Neverland. And never met him before, never seen him perform. Got there. I took a girl to try to impress, you know, her and stuff like that. So we drive, like, three hours away to go to his ranch. Get there. Waited another like two and a half hours. I was getting so pissed because I thought he wasn't going to show up. So I'm like, yo, let's just leave. Like, screw Michael Jackson. Bro, as we're walking out, I just saw the umbrella and was like, 
<laughs> oh, for real. <laughs> Literally almost fainted. I saw him, Joe Jackson, and 3T is a... <laughs> the the <laughs> group? And the, the whole group? Umbrella, the <laughs> 3T? Then you took it back. The whole group was there. and I and I But it's, it's a certain energy that you're just like... I was like that with you and uh, like Kid Capri. We did we did something in New York um, with Rip Michaels. Oh, that sh that show with eighty five yeah, comics on it. I get like there's there's a level and it's it's you know you guys being OGs and like seeing you guys how funny you are and all those things. So God, that show. That, in uh, <laughs> that, that was the spin around. Oh thing. my God, yeah. I was like this. How <laughs> many people are on this show? <laughs> And I was second to last. I was like, I think Bill Bellamy went last that night. But I was just like, oh, fuck, yeah. this is taking forever. But I, those shows, they start at 8, and they don't start at 8. And then you're second to last, but the promoter's like, yeah, can you get here 30 minutes before showtime? I go, I'm not going on before yeah. 11. Yeah, you know yeah, that, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, why do you want me here so early? <laughs> That's That was the picture we took. You look like I'm going second to last. Oh, God. I'm pissed. I hate those shows. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. I respect headliners so much on those. Because I've been on the road with Epps the last couple of years where, you know, there's like five of us. Yeah. And I go, I, that's what I always tell comics, man. If you're on, if you're you get on tour with somebody... Be on time and do your time. You'll always work. Yeah, yeah. Because when you get somebody going along with it, it fucks the whole yeah, show up. Yeah, yeah, I'll cut a joke off in the middle of it. If Just the promoter gets the light, and I'm like, oh, fuck, and I look down the clock, and it says 30. Right. I'm like, yeah. So I had this bitch bend over the bed, right? right? <laughs> Good night. <laughs> and people are like, did he finish the joke? <laughs> right. I'm like, it's 30, man. Right. I'm on the nose with the shit. Like, I got it down to a science. Right, right. But that's why I think they always... Keep, they always call me again to go on the road because I'm like, you know I ain't going long. Yeah. You know I ain't going long. Yeah. That's the worst. I think for me, like I had one person who hosted and did like his special. And I was like, bro, I can't. I don't care if you're funnier than me, if you get a stand ovation or anything like that because I feel like that's me just learning to grow and work and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But this dude did so much material. By the time I got to the audience, they were so drunk, I couldn't even do my jokes. So worst. that that's what was like frustrating to me, but um, it's Mullen would make me go longer sometimes. Like he'll wait until I'm about to finish my set, and he did that to me a few times. But he'll be like, "Hey, do longer time. I gotta use the bathroom. I got to do do." Like, How's he gonna tell you on stage? He he would you know I, I do the introduction like, "Yo, you see them on this, you see them on this. Yeah. Give it up, Mullen. Where's the music playing?" He opened the curtain. He'd be like, "Hey." Do more time. I got to do <laughs> <laughs> But that's I, the headliner. That's okay if the headliner is telling you to do that. Yeah, but but not when you have the crowd good. And then I'm like, You shot oh, your load? You like, you shot your load? You, you did your big closer? Like this. Oh, fuck. That's that's it. I've had that happen. My uh, my my guy said, here I am story topping again. I'm sorry, Shantae. <laughs> no, I'm just the big please, story topper. It's all... <laughs> My guy stated that he shot his load one night. He gave all his A material, and uh, he was hosting. And the feature had literally run to Starbucks to get me a coffee. Because oh, I man. said, dude, and the club didn't have one. He goes, hey, and the feature was like, dude, I just want to get you one. It's right the street. We was at the DC Improv. And Say was supposed to do like five or ten, which wasn't a big deal. I even told the club, I go, just have Say stretch a little bit yeah. until he gets back with the coffee, and he'll go up. And he only had to stretch like five, ten minutes. When I say he <laughs> like he was shook that he yeah. starts sweating and he just goes like this, Gene <laughs> is Gene back? <laughs> and then he would, he'd tell a joke and, and it wouldn't hit and he goes, is Gene back yet? <laughs> was that wait was that even his voice? Yeah, it was it say his voice. He'd be like this and yeah, is Gene back yet? Where's Gene? Gene? <laughs> I was like this, yo, what the fuck? Right. And he got on stage. I go. What the fuck was right. that? I go, you've opened for me. You've done 30 minutes. You only did like 10. What? He goes, yeah, but I did my like closing shit. Right. <laughs> I was like this. Why'd you do that? Yeah. You're just hosting. Why'd yeah. you do your closing shit? I, th I think for like for me at the time, I because I do storytelling, you have your stuff in order. So mm -hmm. like if I was, if I knew I was going to do that time, then I would have my stuff lined up. That's, mm -hmm. That was the night though. I, I realized like you just got to be ready. To, mm -hmm. to come at it anyway, but 
That that's you get like two sympathy laughs of going, well, that's all I got. <laughs> and, and I low key feel like Marlon was just hidden behind the curtain, just trying just to see with me you? sweat. Yeah. Just trying to see you sweat. Yeah. And then to have the energy to bring him back up again. I'm like, all right, guys. <laughs> Try this again. Right. Commercial break. Is Jean here? Is Jean? Is Jean back? <laughs> Where's Gene? Yeah. Anyway, it was like, I, I was watching a comic have a mental breakdown. Where's Gene? It's, it's so. Gene. And I kept looking like, why are you, what is the deal? You were fine. Exhausting. He just, I guess in his brain, he just lost it. I have, uh, I want to see if you have a story like this in your early career, but Virginia has been probably one of my toughest places. The city or the state? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Richmond. Rich, the funny bone? Richmond. So I, I do well when I was featuring, right? So I went to headline. Uh, he gave me five shows. I go to headline and they have me, first of all, they promote me with my hair straight and stuff like that. So I got like church people in there. <laughs> I got like all these people that when I get on stage, it's like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> so I get there. I do really well. Like I'm almost sold out. Um, all that stuff. I get on stage for four shows. I bombed the entire time. <laughs> Not only was I bombing, so like the lights was low enough that I'm like, well, at least people, you know, might get some merch, you know, some sympathy <laughs> merch. But when the lights came up, there was only like the two rows. Left? The only people there. Oh, wow. I was like, I didn't even see them leaving. <laughs> so for four shows, I was just on there for 45 minutes dying. dying. What happened? I I don't know. I don't I don't know. When you have your host and your feature destroy. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're sitting there like, man, they ain't even that fun. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. Were they destroying with like good material or was it like... The feature was funny. Dick the feature suck. Was, no, no, no. Put in your ass. <laughs> come no. on your face. Like, I think the host was kind of like that. The feature was actually... I was like his niece. She was, you know, from the South, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So he just brought in different... He was able to talk to the crowd. But yeah. like I said, it was like looking at the crowd, seeing... It's like I was looking at God and the audience trying to do certain material, and I was like, this is not going to fly. That's so weird. No comedian... You're one of the few that are openly talking about bombing. Oh, because, I don't care. Because most... I always say when, when people ask me, like, you're bombed, I go, it's like fucking an ugly girl. <laughs> Every guy has done it. We just ain't talking about it. <laughs> Do you? I never... I always hear stories about comics bombing. I know, but to, to be so open, like, yo, I was in rich... Here's the thing. You'll bomb, but you 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 rationalize it in your head. Right. You'd be like, oh, it was the It's something else. It you this. know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I even... I try to give you an out. I try to be like, so the feature was doing hacky ah! shit, right? No, nah, he, like he was doing nah, he was like all about genius himself. material, man. I'm like this. Oh. <laughs> So the host was is, hacky. Is no. Gene here? These guys were amazingly original, and I just struggled. I mean, I would ever again. hear that shit from a comic, by the way. I refuse I to think, bomb and be my fault. I, I think it was, bro I think those are the stories that make me laugh. Because I, I can, you know, go back now and it'll be different. But you sure was... you're not related to Keenan son? Well, ah! <laughs> Keenan is funny. He just Ke doesn't <laughs> like, he don't give a fuck. fuck off stage. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've, honestly, I don't think I've ever heard a comment. I'm trying to think. I've ever heard a comment just go like, dude, I just shit up. Because, I mean, when I say I've heard some of the most amazing excuses of why people ate it, one, one comic... <laughs> was on the side of the stage, and I'm not going to say no names, but I'll tell you off stage. <laughs> but we're on, we're on tour together, and he was sitting on the side of the stage, and I was a headliner, and he was going right before me, and it was one of them four or five guys yeah. on a theater show. And literally, he's like, man, that one fucking knows I talk about sucking dick. <laughs> and I went, what? So you have a monopoly on blowjob jokes. <laughs> the guy's joke had nothing to do right. with... His joke, but the fact that he was talking about getting a blowjob in a different manner, I was like this. But the real reason is he was having a hard time going after this dude every night yeah. on the weekend. I was like, that's really where it came from. Yeah, yeah. If you're destroying, you ain't worried about what they're talking about in front yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. I was like this. And both guys are really funny dudes. Yeah. It was just, <clears throat> for you some reason, this them. at this point of time, this is like eight years ago, 
this comic was just in the pocket for 20 minutes. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, he's really bringing it for 20. And then, and the comic had a rep of, of sampling. Oh, So yeah, when you yeah, get yeah. those comics, even yeah. if they do come up with an original bit, yeah. we still always look at them as samplers. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? I, I will honestly say, like, it's, it's like you being in the Bible Belt, and I went out going, I'm going to just be me. And this is when, like, my whole material was just about my lifestyle. And, I, you know, I was trying to stretch to get that hour. So I went out, and I didn't really have nothing to adjust on or, like, try to go a different way. But mm -hmm. I doubted myself for four of those shows. And the fifth show, I didn't give a fuck. And that was on a Sunday, which mm -hmm. was crazy to me because that was church day. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I, I love owning it. Well, you own the fuck out of that. I, love, I gave you I every bought, out nah. possible. He was, he was original. He was... And he was coming in the green room like he was the headliner. He was in the he was selling merch by me. <laughs> you, let me ask you this: When you headlining or you're featuring, do you go to the headliner and ask if you could sell merch? I never sell merch with the headliner. I I just feel like it should all go to them. Like I'm grateful to be there. Mm. You know, especially like with my uncles, I was like counting the room. I was I was an assistant and yeah. doing that. So. I just, you know, I feel like that's a Did he come level. to you? Did the feature come to you and ask for to sell merch? I feel like after he saw my set, <laughs> or after he watched 20 minutes of it, he was setting his table like, <laughs> ironing it. <laughs> He's like, well, I think I'm going to sell it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I had family come, because I had my mom promoting and stuff like that, because they know people in different cities. Yeah. So I'll have them promote for me sometimes to give them money. I had family come in, still wanting a picture. But oh, wasn't hysterical. buying nothing. Hysterical. <laughs> He's like, you know what? They're gonna buy my shit. Right. Yeah. Go. I was like, I've had merch is a um it's a it's a great way to make a lot of money. Yeah. That a lot of uh I think comedy fans don't even realize how much I, I, I'm so mad the first like five years of my career I didn't have anything. Yeah. I just didn't I was like, wait a minute. Then I started boxing up DVDs. Yeah. And then t-shirts. T-shirts never go out of style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I've had, I've had, I've had uh, conversations with openers where I'm like, hey, uh, I had like, I was selling my t-shirt for twenty. Yeah. This guy literally got on stage after the first show the next night and goes, yeah, I got t-shirts only ten dollars. <laughs> Sounds like this. Yeah. What the fuck was yeah. that? So I had to pull him aside. I said, hey, I don't know if you meant to do that. Yeah. I said, but you just like underbid me. Yeah. You know what and I mean? Like, well, I can go get this. And I was like, I don't. I like I don't ever stop guys from selling merch. I just always, if you're open for me, I'm like, just be over here. I don't want to overwhelm people with merch. So if you kind of be like this, no, you you you're after me, but feel free to sell it over here. It's it's not it's because even like let's say you don't do well, it's still like paying respect. You know what I'm saying? It's your mm -hmm. show. You, it's very hard to get to be able to feature or open up for somebody. So mm -hmm. sometimes if your thing like I. I don't want to say stroke eagles, but I just feel like when you're at that level, it's a you know it's a respect thing. But I I've been in Florida. I remember having uh, two guys. One was a host. One was the feature. And one the first thing the dude the host said to me was like, "Yo, uh, you mind if I like do this joke because like it kills?" And I'm like, "Do you?" And he's like, "I'm telling you, it kills." So I go, "Bro, you supposed to make yourself want to get booked again, right?" Goes on stage. The joke he did was basically entertaining the crowd, having them come on stage so he can dance. They love it. They're participating. They love that type of shit. No jokes. The feature comes on. Same thing. Yo, you mind? Like, I get a standing ovation. Go ahead. Another dance. Brought somebody on stage. Gets a standing ovation. I go on stage, do my material. I do very well. Not a standing ovation, but I do very well. I go and wait by the door, uh, like, where, where they're going to exit. They rushed with their merchandise with, you know, so it's the door you come out of the club and then it's the door to exit the comedy club. So I'm waiting by the exit, the second exit. They're right there. Two people bought their stuff. Everybody walked by me and, and bought my stuff. So for me, that became about, it's for, for the real point of it, nobody gives a fuck about the openers and the features. They're here to see you. They don't. So I don't care how well you destroy it. <laughs> they're going. That sounds heartless, get, but you're true. you're so on the money because that's why when who's ever featuring for me, I always tell them. I said, look, 
you know, we start adding shows, we could do eight, nine shows in a weekend. Right. I said, if you don't try something new, you wasted your weekend. Yeah. Because you're in a perfect spot. If yeah. you don't do that great, if the headliner's funny, which if I'm funny, right. they all leave happy. Right. But unlike your weekend in Richmond. Right. You, but- <laughs> Hey, man. Sorry about last, that, Shantae. The last show was really good. <laughs> Unlike your weekend in Richmond. I'm just kidding. Yo. <laughs> but that's the truth. I'm like this. Yo, you got to try something. Does Marlon tell you that when you're with them? Yeah. I would always I mean, be like, you, you like got to try something. And it's not even about trying a new joke. Yeah. But mix it up. Yeah. And sometimes you're cutting and pasting. Like, it could be the same premise. Yeah. But throw in an extra something or take something out. Just to see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you're just like on autopilot, I'm like, it kind of, even me, like, even my headline, I was like, I kind of wasted the weekend. Yeah. If I just did everything the same every night, yeah. I almost get bored by like, if we're doing eight shows, yeah, it's, it's, if I'm on the seventh show, yeah. now I'm like, I want to try something different. Yeah. Maybe they don't laugh. Yeah, yeah. I got a joke right now. The last three weeks, I don't have an ending to it. And literally, it's, everything's funny. But there's no closer. And I literally just like this. Ah, fuck. <laughs> it's a new joke. And I almost like want to put it in my special. Like, right. I can't fucking think of it. And I'll sit there on stage like, it's going to happen. Right. I just don't know what it's going to happen. But the joke just kind of fucking ends. I'm like, the you whole crowd's it. like, ah. I go, God, I don't have a no. punchline to this yet. <laughs> Is that your last joke? That's no, no, ending? it's not the last. Oh, okay, but okay. I'm just like, everything about the joke is funny. But there's not an ending to it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like. And I'll just be on stage like, I thought something would pop in my head, but nothing did again. That I'm surprised social media people aren't like throwing stuff at you. Because sometimes Wait. I get a lot of like tags. If oh, I go really? live and I just start talking, mm-hmm. they there's some funny people that you don't know that's sitting at their house doing nothing. That's tagging your That's shit? just tagging stuff. Have you seen the videos where they... Um... There's people now that they'll get on YouTube and their whole page is pulling up comedy bits and laughing at it. Mm-mm. I, you know, sometimes I'll get tagged and people send it to me. Yeah. But there's literally people that have YouTube pages and are making money off YouTube and building fan bases off just like, hey, I got Shantae Wayans. I'm going to do this. This is a bit she did on the, the, the Tiffany Haddish special. And they'll Maybe. watch five minutes of your shit. And they'll just be like, either they liked it, they didn't like it, they'll laugh at it. But it's not like hate and stuff. They're literally like just like Cisco and Ebert. That's but just crazy. but there's a lot of them out there. That's I never I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, yeah. That's, I didn't I didn't realize too until people start tagging me and then I'll uh, go to YouTube and look and it's funny watching them react. And it'll be an old bit. And they're acting like they never seen it. Right. You know what I mean? Like my black church joke, like, let me see what this is. <laughs> Man, this guy's going places. He's really funny. I'm like this. That joke's like 11 years old now. <laughs> it's my first joke. What yeah. is <laughs> <laughs> Like double wide I, west side? Wow. Take I it back. thought you were saying like they would sit there and go, now I would have did this joke this way. No, they'll just like, they'll just, I haven't seen one where it's just hating. Usually they're, they're there to have a good time. And most of them are laughing their asses off at your bits. And then you'll go to How their are page. You making money? This is so weird. YouTube? I'm just saying, like, the stuff you can make money. And why wouldn't that be copywritten? Well, it's like they're not, um, it's not like music, where they're just reacting to your jokes. They're not, like, repeating it. They're not trying to, you know. There's so many loopholes in this. I'm I'm about to go put that on my YouTube. I'm going to put your whole album. Do it. And just watch. Just tag me. (laughs) And then I'll repost it off your page. I've gone back. Listen, I've gone back since the pandemic, and you. I was unemployed for four months. I literally called my manager. I said, "What are we doing? Right. How 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 can we have some revenue coming in during this pandemic?" Right. And just we, I own all my specials, so we start cutting them up, and I hired this the social media firm to really cut them up, and they're good at getting algorithms, yeah. making sure your shit's getting yeah. recommended, and. You know, I, I'm just shocked at how much money you can make on Facebook and YouTube. I'm like this. That I'm I'm this close to hitting that uh what you gonna call it to I mean I'm eligible already, but isn't it like a thousand subscribers? No, you on need YouTube? ten oh, I don't know about YouTube. YouTube I'm already monetizing. Mm-hmm. Um Facebook, I'm at twenty two thousand because you gotta have one minute 
views. You gotta have thirty thousand one minute views in mm-hmm. sixty days. Okay, is that so, what it is? Yeah, <laughs> I got that easy. Ah! I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's it. Oh well, my god! Flag your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe That's simple. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Aim low, Shante. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I just got hipped on it. Like I I wasn't. It's too many. Let me tell you. I can't keep adding apps to my thing. Let Although just, I like Clubhouse. Sorry. Okay. Let me just tell you. There's so much more money in Facebook than YouTube. Oh, like I, people say YouTube. Fucking Facebook. Right. I don't re, I don't realize till I get my updates weekly. I'm like, holy yeah, shit. Yeah. You can you can get out. like one dope ass video that just gets shared. Like, you know, I think the biggest one I've had. I turned my black church joke into a sketch, mm-hmm. and then I posted that. I posted that motherfucker on Facebook, and it got shared. I'm talking like a hundred thousand times, right. which it's, equals out to like fifty we million get it, views. Gary, we I was like this. Oh, there's been it. other ones that didn't get shared a lot, <laughs> but it's always the ones. Let me tell you something. When you start posting videos of yourself, it's always the ones that you like just like throw it in there. Like, oh, that's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like this. Why did that one take off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this shit you think is gonna be like this the heavy this this right. that dancing closer. Right, right. <laughs> that it was selling merch. Right, Nothing. right. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. But I think it's the attention span because it like it's funny watching my stuff grow. I got like five hundred thousand three second video uh views. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I'm like, why can't some of that just shift so I can be eligible to start making the money already? Well, what's your Facebook? You gotta Pump it while you're here. Oh, it's uh, C Wayans. So C W A Y A N S. No uh, hyphen, no underscore. No, so it's facebook.com backslash, backslash. C Wayans. Wayans. Yeah, W A Y A N S. Yes. Because I'll get people that's like, I couldn't find it. And I was like, it's not Wayans. Right. They were Wayans. W A Y N E S. Yeah, they'll spell it that way. And, and thanks for How do you misspell telling- Wayne? Now, I would, there's so many, and the Wayans have been around for 30 years now. I think that would be the. People would just know it's W A Y A N S. Gary, I've said that I was a niece of my uncles on stage while they're headlining and get off stage, and they go, "You a Wayans?" <laughs> <laughs> or who's that? And is you, you all kind of look alike too. But li- people want to think what they want to think, or maybe they just don't know what to ask. But I've been asked, "Who's your mom?" I said, "Who my mom was on stage." Like, are you Damon's mm. daughter? Did you just not <laughs> hear? I can tell them word for word everything, and they still ask a, the opposite question. They're not paying no attention. They just Who's they're there dad? to see Marlon. They they're, they're there to see Marlon. <laughs> they're there to see the headline. Yep. Ah, I came, <laughs> I've tried merch maybe once or twice with them. It's like I'm gonna just I'm gonna take these five hundred shirts back. Yeah. Thanks for buying two. <laughs> 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 Let me just take these. Yeah, I think I still got some of those shirts. When people always ask, like, um, I'm trying to word this correctly. When people ask, like, well, you got, like, okay, so they, there's so many weigh-ins, right? And then I remember when we did Little Man, Sean made a comment. And we was talking about people always saying, you weigh in. You know, like, Sean and Mar was always working together for a long time. Mm-hmm. And Sean was like, yeah, people always say, like, why are you always working with your brothers? Work with somebody else. And Sean was like, why? So I can work with you? Right. Why wouldn't I want to work with my brothers? I like them. I was like this. And I, right. I remember just, I was like this. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, why yeah. wouldn't I work with these guys? I, I know what I'm getting. Yeah. Do you ever, like, go to Marlon, Sean, or Keenan and pitch anything? I do, but they, I've, I have. What's great about them is that they take your idea and you're just steal like, it. I, they yeah. steal it. <laughs> Little man was mine. Yeah, I was like uh, this. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it when I was on. I said, this is so Shantae. I came like, with white chicks. Like, everything. I knew that too. Uh, <laughs> no, they make, they make it so much bigger. They The frustrating is going to get ideas from them makes you not want to do it. You don't want to follow through. Because she's like, I wasn't even thinking that in my brain. Now I have to rethink everything and add on. But it's it's a dope thing. Even in comedy, they would come to some of my shows, and I would get stuck on stage, and uh, they would just start throwing stuff out there. They'd be like, "Well, what up? What if she did this? Or what else did she do?" I can't do. I can't. There's no way I could talk comedy with. Not, I could talk sitcoms and movies with a round table of the weigh-ins, but there's no fucking way I want to talk stand-up. 
Because oh, they would. will try to break everything down. I go, guys, <laughs> I'm just being funny. Right? <laughs> I am not trying to figure out the origin, where this character came from. Is that from childhood trauma? I'm like this. Look, I'm just right, right. making these motherfuckers <laughs> laugh, and I don't even know what's going to pop in my head. <laughs> they will give you a history oh, of my God. how to like do yeah. But that that's what I'm saying. Sometimes taking ideas to like people like that, you're like, never mind. I don't even want to do it. I'm, I'm just, just going to go to uh, TV One. Yeah. I'm just, ah! <laughs> Where they ask no What's questions. That, Bounce TV? I'm going to go to Bounce with this because right now you guys are MSNBC. Where? You're breaking this shit down, Keenan. What the fuck are you talking about? You don't about? even want to do it anymore. <laughs> you're like, as brilliant as that is, forget it, bro. It's, oh man, that's funny. They will break shit down like that. They will. I want no part of that shit. I do not want to. I'm remember, just trying to be funny. Do you remember um, Marlon did the, uh, he had the pilot, and I don't think it, I don't think it went anywhere, but I, I was the, I was there with Brisha Webb. We were coaches. We were coaches. Um, I don't know. Anyways, this probably didn't go anywhere, and Marlon oh, shot no. it, and uh, I remember we was back, we was on the, whatever sound stage was on talking, and Keenan was talking nutrition. He was breaking this shit down, like what this food does to your body and this right. food. And I was really asking, inquiring questions. What should I eat? What shouldn't I eat? And then I think Marlon was in the room. And then, do you know Lisa Bloom? Yeah. She's my manager now, but used to be Marlon's yeah, manager. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I just took her as manager. She <laughs> used to be Marlon's, but she got sick of that <laughs> motherfucker. And now she is, nah. But at one point, she had a lot of the way in. Yeah. And I just remember there was a guy, and he was like an opener. And he was with somebody that was on the show. And he came in and tried to make a joke as Keenan was really breaking down what these foods do your body. And I'll never forget the look Keenan gave him. He was, because the dude literally came in and goes, Yeah, I'm just drinking motherfucking Mountain Dew and eating Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> and Keenan went, So the macros, you need 30 grams. And I remember yeah. thinking, I wouldn't, and the, when I say the guy disappeared, I looked around, he just faded away. And I go, I, and when McKean does talking, I'm like, yo, did you make that motherfucker <laughs> disappear? Like, he's literally not here. That's the, the look silence. Keenan gave him, it almost was like, never work with him <laughs> again. <laughs> it was the most, he went, he it was a desk job. there. He became transportation. Yeah, he, he went to the grip department. Oh after. my <laughs> god! When he came in with the Doritos, yeah. <laughs> you had time to, but it was the worst. It was comedy's all about timing. It couldn't have been the worst timing. I remember just thinking, I'm so glad Keenan likes me. Shoot your <laughs> shot. I just it's shoot your shot. <laughs> literally shoot your shot. Because yeah. when I'm with those guys, when I'm with Marlon or Keenan and. Working with them, I'm always like this. What, what are we eating today? Yeah. I just asked them, order me what you order because I know I'm going to feel better about it's my always, body. Well, have you seen uh, the new Keenan eats meat and stuff? Right? I know, right? Yeah. I came, I came, went to his house as a vegan and he was making, he was like, you want some burgers? I was like, oh, actually, I'm doing a vegan thing. He's like, for what? He's like, <laughs> people in Africa don't eat fucking berries. Why? Why? Well, and- you didn't say that on Little Man. <laughs> right. You vegan eating mother. <laughs> I'm not gonna call him motherfucker. He might hear it. He does that. <laughs> it was the eat right for your blood type. He's like, you don't fucking eat he <laughs> berries and uh, stuff in the wild. I was like, <laughs> what? what? You, what the- I've never been to Africa. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't pussy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's no calories. <laughs> you eat meat, right? I mean, that's I ain't pussy meat. That's a lot of mercury. <laughs> it's like, what? Just let me you, fucking... Can't, you have to... What, you Be careful. Yeah. You don't know what He's these like, girls are eating. Fuck? And you don't want to get that. He will go yeah. into that. He will break down their enzymes and stuff. You're like, never mind. I can... And I'm sure that's when you're talking about pitching the show. I'm sure it's the same way. It's, it's breaking like, everything down. Yeah. But that, what I love about them is that you don't ever really get shut down. It's never like, don't do that. As mm-hmm. No matter what you come up with, it's always like, hmm. And they'll listen, and you're like, oh, they hate this. And they'll go, if I was you, I would do it this way. And that's what I think a lot of people don't realize in the business is a family like the Wayans, who they do, you guys do work together a lot. Yeah. But they just expect like, yo, Shantae, why, why aren't they putting you in movies? Or why aren't yeah. they writing movies for you and stuff? Yeah. And I go, they, one thing I've, well, I only worked on Little Man and shot a pilot. They, they 
but I pitch stuff to them. Yeah. And with them, they make you earn it. Yeah. They're like they this. Make, you got to yeah. do the work. Yep. And we'll, 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 we're in your corner. Yeah. But you got to do the work. You, we're not just going to do it for you. And, and they're still working. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like it, it, the the way they actually break down stuff. Keenan to this day, he could probably shoot stuff like this, but they really like trying to put in that time, you know, and do it. That's why when they did Scary Movie One and then versus Scary Movie Two, they it was like a little bit of hate in that one because they had to rush that. You know what I mean? The second one. The second one. It was like we need that in two months, and it was yeah. like that's not that's not how we got Scary Movie One. You know what I mean? But I. It, you learn you learn so much from them. I know that my whole career, because it's funny, people be like, yo, I'm so, uh, it's crazy that you like build yourself and you, you know, made a lane for yourself. And now I tell people like, that was probably one of the dumbest things I've done. Because you got a family who created an empire and you wouldn't want to follow that. <laughs> like no matter what I did, people are going to think I got it from them mm-hmm. or because of them. You know what I'm saying? So like now it's like that was fucking dumb. I'm doing postmates, I'm doing all this stuff to try to make a name for myself, which I'm glad I did that work, but people still reference me with them. So I never I wouldn't have had you on the show if your last name was. I know you wouldn't. I know. Shantae Smith. I felt like I should just call Marlon and Keenan right now. I already had Marlon. I already had Marlon. It's fine. Did you did you ask him about me? Did I ask that I um maybe I did. I don't know if I did or not. I just, Sorry about that. I just went, <laughs> I'm like this. Yeah. Wait a minute. Did, did I ask about Did you ask him Shantae? why he farted on me before I went on stage? No. You know? Like on your face? He farted on my lap. Why did he do that? And I that was the day I stopped touring with him. <laughs> I hated him. I hated so he him. just sat on you and I didn't talk ass? to him for two years. And then Ooh, and it was probably so fart, organic. Farted, farted on me. And then literally you hear, coming to the stage, Shante. <laughs> Wiping off I had to go stank. on stage and talk about it. I was so <laughs> mad. I was so mad. Gene? Gene? <laughs> Is Gene around? No, I was so mad. Then I came back. When I got off, he was like doing this. Like, oh, come. I, don't fucking touch me. Nasty ass. Don't you touch me. <laughs> Martin looks like he would just have the fucking foulest farts too. He's Some people, you look at them. Marlon looks like his farts. Oh, Gary. like Sean's looks like it just be like a like a queef. <laughs> <laughs> like Why queef. do you have the sound effects with it? <laughs> like Sean, Sean just looks like, <laughs> and Keenan looks like he would he would talk to his fart before it came out <laughs> <laughs> like this. Um, I'm gonna try to hold it. Uh, I'm not sure if I can. So everyone, if you want to leave the room, it's gonna come out in literally 36 seconds. Keenan looks like he, he, he knows his body so well. Like, All right, this is the unexpected. I have three of these a month. Uh, this is one of them, so get ready. It's coming out. And Sean just looks like it wouldn't even stink. Sean yeah. just be like, be like, Shh. Ah, it comes out. <laughs> but all Marlon, the, his farts do this. All that tequila Mexico is coming <laughs> out of his farts. <laughs> Marlon is the most. He used to freaking uh, grab. He used to eat everything that could make his breath smell bad. And then they would hold us down and lick the side of our face. Since a kid? When we were kids, yeah. Mm. He was so... I don't think he's outgrown that. Disgusting. I don't think so either. No. <laughs> I don't think he's that. I don't think... He, he probably did that when he farted on me. He was like, what can I have mm. to piss her off? Why don't you go on tour with like uh, Jordan Rock and like one of the Murphys? <laughs> I, tried to, I tried to do it with uh, uh, Pryor. With Mason oh, Pryor. Oh, yeah. Mason Pryor. There's all these like family trees of comedians that are just out there on the road now. No, nobody really wants to do that, though. It's, oh, really? and, and it's still harder to try to sell that name. Like, I feel like if you had them behind you in some way, it will be cool. But you, when, when people hear, like, Rock or Wayne sometimes, they don't, they're still trying to figure out if you're really related. Well, I, I'm being serious. Them, like, all, I feel like you have the, to be pumped up in a different way. It has to be like a real package. Like, you can just look at the Wayans, the, the Rocks, I the know. Priors. I'm like this. Listen, it, it's a Maury episode if you're not. No, I, I, I know. I know. I've tried with Mason Pryor. His mom was the manager, and I called her, and she was trying to tell me, you ain't got to use the name and. All this stuff. Why not? I, Why I was, wouldn't you? I was like, we're just like second gen. It's like when I mean? um when uh Bill Bird, Donnell Rollins, and Charlie Murphy went out, they were just like the Chappelle show guys. Yeah. yeah Remember yeah. when Chappelle like the show went off the air? Yep. 
all the clubs, the, the three of them was together. And it ended up working out really for all three of them. Yeah. They all kind of ventured out and eventually created their own lane. Yeah. What was that, uh, like 2004? I remember I was getting a hold of Chappelle and Kat. And this before they both of them blew. Right before they both blew up. And I was trying to like, dude, I was like, let's do the new Ohio players because we're all from the same area. Mm -hmm. And I go, we'll just do like Cleveland and Columbus and Cincinnati and Toledo. We'll just do like a couple weekends. Just in, we could probably do a little theater to the three of us. Yeah. And they were both kind of like listening, but not committing. And I when I tell you like the next <laughs> week, like both of them blew up. I was like, what the fuck they, happened? They knew Guess that that's was not happening. <laughs> They knew it was coming. They was like, yeah, yeah, we'll talk to you if this deal doesn't go through next Oh, my week. God. Like, who knew Chappelle was going to take off like that? And right. who knew Kat was going to just take off like this? Oh. Right? <laughs> guess, guess we're not doing that, are we? Okay. See you guys when it come up. And I remember thinking, <laughs> uh, one thing I'll, I'll say, all the people I worked with, even coming up, like, the ones that really took off, I was like, I saw it. Kat, it I happened. saw. Yeah. Chappelle, I didn't see Kevin. Like the the level yeah, that he is, yeah, like yeah. I know he'd all, he'd always be working. Yeah, didn't yeah. see that coming at all. Didn't see Tiffany coming. Yeah, so not all, but I remember Chelsea Handler opened up for me one time, and I was like, "Yo, was something gone. there." Yeah, Ali Wong, I was like, yeah. "There's something there." Yeah, there's, there's, there've been so many. I was like, "Man, they're gonna take." I toured with Cat. I toured. I toured with him like twice. What What years was that? I want to say like 2005. Oh, that was right. Well, that was before he really blew, blew. No, no, no. 2005, he he wasn't. He he already blew. I thought 2006, the HBO HBO special came out, and that's what really was. Tr well, it was like it was really the BET Comedy Awards. Wait, where are we at? We're in two, 2020. Shit. Yeah. When was I in Atlanta? I think maybe 2008, nine. That sounds more. Your timeline works out. Ah! Like that. <laughs> he, he was already he was already famous. Like he was he was huge. Well, was it because I Kevin remember Kevin Hart was big too. Huh? Who was Kevin Hart already blew up? Well, that had to be like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll tell you two funny stories. Like briefly, I was in Hartford, Connecticut, and Kevin was coming the week after me, and I went out to this little hole in the wall club, and uh, I was with uh, a couple of buddies of mine. They, they worked for ESPN. And they start talking to these girls, and they say, yo, Gary's in town. They go, oh, my God. They go, I, I got tickets to see Kevin next week. I like, <laughs> don't have money to see him this week. Oh, and I go, wait a minute. <laughs> so you bought tickets in advance? Because right. I remember looking like, oh, my God, Kevin's headlining now. Right, that's what's right. going through my brain. Right. And that's, like, that's, that's what so I went, cute. wait a minute. Those girls bought tickets before me, and he's here the week after me. I go, <laughs> Oh, this guy's starting to move some tickets, yeah, yeah, clearly. Because yeah. they was like, they apologized. Right. Ah, can't do both. <laughs> we chose Kev. A week after you, I was like, oh. And then I remember Kat, um, he did a special in Cincinnati. Like, did his own, b bought the theater out, did, put up his own money. And I remember seeing the flyers around the city. They didn't even say Cat Williams. Cat Williams was small. They was like Money Mike from next Friday. Mm. That's how they were promoting it. Mm. And... I remember he did that special in Cincinnati, and then he did the HBO special right after, and it's basically kind of the same special. Yeah, yeah. So I think he did it independently, and then got the deal at HBO, mm -hmm. and then they're they're both kind of out there now. That was but Pimp it's, Chronicles. I, it was the first one. Yeah, that he did yeah, in Atlanta. Yeah. That I think that was Pimp Chronicles. Right? Is that Pimp Chronicles? That it might have like been. The, they're talking about the weed, the crypto kind of. And he like. said, "Fuck Michael Jackson." Yeah. At the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cats had so many specials since then. But I know. I can't remember the name of it. But I remember seeing the flyer going, damn, they're promoting Money Mike. Yeah. And then he just, the next year, psh, I remember Austin, Texas, me and Cat got booked together and I thought we were going to do a theater and we got there and it was the basketball arena, Frank Irwin Center. God. And I remember when I got there, I go, why would the promoter do that? That was stupid. Right, right. That's not going to sell. Me and Cat are going for about 2,000 tickets. <laughs> that bitch was so crowded. And I was like, where the fuck did this happen? <laughs> I was looking around like, oh, Cat Blue. Right, right. Whoa, when they, to see the crowd go nuts when they announced his name, I was like, holy fuck. Cat took off. I have a question. Do you think it's easy? it was easier back then to sell out when you had that name? Like, why do you think it's so hard for people to sell out now? And And I say that to say, like, do you feel like because it's more comedians doing stuff or? You mean like sell out comedy clubs or theaters or what? Yeah, like like today because there's so many more comedians versus like back then. I feel like when you had a name, 
it was like good to go. I still feel like certain people struggle sometimes even with the name. Oh, really? I don't know. I don't know. No. I think it's all just it's a big roller coaster. Uh, you know, I thought this question was going to be very brilliant. No. And I thought you were no. like, ah, I never heard that. No, I don't try to. I, <laughs> he's looking at some of my sales tickets. He's I don't like, know what the fuck ah. you're talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Shante. Like, Once you ah. sell, you sell. You know, watch. Next. I don't know. I can't explain it. I don't know. Like I said, you got those people. I, I'll never blame like a club or anybody if tickets don't sell. I'll just be like, for whatever reason, it didn't happen because when uh, Dave allegedly went crazy in 2005, mm -hmm. he came to Cincinnati and they announced on Wednesday night, they just put on the website, yeah. Dave's coming the next Wednesday through Sunday, did two shows a night, 10 shows. They've been sold out so goddamn fast. I go, oh, if they yeah. really want to go, people they'll will go. find out you're in town and they'll go. That was, that was where I, I did a show with Russell and uh, uh, whatchamacallit, I think Dayton, uh, Funny Bone. Russell the, Peters? Yeah. I did a show with him, no promotion, no anything. Packed. And the the club owner, the day of the show, he we were like in the green room. He was like, oh my God, tickets, blah, 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 blah. He was like, don't worry. They had <laughs> such a long line. Russell said, don't worry? Yeah. He said, don't <laughs> worry. They had such a long line. This is like a 450 seater. Such a long line, they had to turn people away. All Indians? Indians and Asians. The fucker like, got, he got that he got the ethnicity. market on lock, bro. <laughs> people on love to lock. see their people out there. His, like, and I heard about Russell's show. I heard like sometimes the his crowd isn't the normal comedy club crowd. Right. They're coming to see Russell. Yeah. And I heard sometimes the features will just be looking at you like, when's Russell coming on? Right. <laughs> um, this is fine, but when's Russell coming on? That's when you don't look at the crowd at all. You just like, <laughs> yeah, and this you just talk to the ceiling. We had we had good good times. Russell's but like a good you dude, said, man. He just he's amazing. He's one of the best Dude. guys in the business. Yeah, for real. Really, really nice dude. I remember him not even knowing who I was, um, and I was at the Laugh Factory and I couldn't get on stage. And I don't. It was the weirdest thing how we like said hi to each other, and he was like, "You going up?" I was like, "Nah, man, I got to do my three minutes to try to <laughs> <laughs> book." He was like, "Come in," and he told him to throw me up on stage, and I was See? like, "Hey." Yeah, he's a dope Can dude, man. Can I go man. to every club with you? I know, right? Yeah, he's he's a real. He knows it's gonna be see. packed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a solid dude. Is there anybody you? Okay, so they're like Shantae Wayans. This is your movie. Who do you want to be the co-star that you haven't worked with? That I haven't worked with? Oh shit! I would I would want a girl that I liked. So really? I could try to <laughs> really you want a Brad be... and Angelina Jolie, yeah. the opposite of that. You want a Nisi Nash somebody? Yeah, I'm a... <laughs> I know I'm you was like, mad. Mm. I knew you was mad when Nietzsche came out. <laughs> the fuck? You know, it's funny. I was supposed to be that girl. <laughs> <laughs> I went out for the same motherfucking role, but I couldn't <laughs> play the guitar. Nah. Um, <laughs> what? I, it, would, it would probably be just for brags to try to get some. Like, you know, what is uh, uh, Lisa Bonet's daughter? Zoe. Yeah, I'd be like, what's uh, Zoe oh, doing? Really? She's a good actress. You know, I've seen her on the Hulu. Yeah. <laughs> I can see I you with Zoe. You can see me with Zoe? Both yeah. kind of earthy. Yeah, yeah. A little Jesse Reyes, be, you know. Be having acai bowls yeah, for breakfast what? together. No. <laughs> Overlooking the ocean. <laughs> Here's Zoe. I put some extra coconut flakes and almond butter in it. Thanks, Shanta. What? <laughs> I put some extra. <laughs> mm, I loved you in Big Little Lies. You were so good. Your husband was so abusive. I would have left him too. <laughs> so Zoe Kravitz, you're the first one that says Zoe Kravitz. Zoe Kravitz. The top two has been Denzel and Will Smith, I think. Ever people I have on, I always ask that question. No, I, I think you. I can see Zoe though. They're gonna take over. You wanna, you wanna like get somebody you could possibly. You're trying to have a relationship though, right? You're trying to work well, in a relationship. It, I'm gonna write it in the script, oh, okay. and then after, oh, like, you went oh, in. No, we cool, yeah. yeah. You went all the way. I'm like, we gonna have sex in okay. every other <laughs> Another scene. Another scene. <laughs> this there's monsters, non balls, balls. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> not monsters, not All right, balls, we got to get balls. you monetized on Facebook. So pump it again. Come on, monsters, non balls, balls. <laughs> I'm naming the movie that. <laughs> monsters, <laughs> non balls. <laughs> Yo. Pump your Facebook again so we can get you monetized. Right, got to make you some money. Yo, go, go to facebook.com backslash C Wance. 
C W A Y A N S. And she's gonna root for these fucking Bengals. I'm I'll not tell you right now for the Broncos. I got my superpowers from this past week. What 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 have they ever been in a championship? They've been in two Super Bowls and lost both times. <laughs> you at least you're loyal. Die hard. And very uh look, my my freaking podcast, all the colors are Bengal colors. They're orange and black. That's this isn't on accident. This is on. Per- you want a t-shirt? Hell What's, no. Well, t-shirt? actually, I like, t-shirt? let me get a, a medium. Put that on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Shantae's titties. I'm gonna be on. Sh- let me. We got You don't even have. Hold on. So could you? Medium. You sure you got a medium? Who who have they um played against? Ever the the Bengals. They play against everybody. Do they? Let me shut the fuck. <laughs> Hold on. That's why we don't have a medium. Oh, you got they a large? Run small, yeah, you might want a large. Go with a large. They run small. I don't know what size your breasts are. <laughs> Huge. Yeah, you're going to need a large. <laughs> they're, the, they're XL, but... Nobody knows I'm how gonna... big Shantae's titties are. Who are you wearing? Female. <laughs> That'd you'll, be funny. You'll see when you I bust put these out of on? A what the fuck? You're going to have all... You're going to have Zoe hitting you up. Hey. Ah! <laughs> You want to do this movie? <laughs> I'm I'm be that perv in uh in Hollywood. You're gonna be like um. Eagle. Hold on, Shantae's gonna have like a bikini, and everybody's gonna look at her like they did when Chris Pratt got in shape, and all of a sudden he was ripped up <laughs> on Guardians of the Galaxy. Like he was fat on when he was on TV. Yeah. And then he got all ripped up for Guardians of the Galaxy, and I was like, "What the fuck?" It right. was a sex symbol. That's why I'm waiting. Put that there. T-shirt on. Spray some water on that shit. Ah! <laughs> Put a little split right here. Yeah. Bring him in, Shate. <laughs> oh, I got you. All I kinds got of Nisi's going to be coming <laughs> at you. Why you keep saying Nisi? Oh, uh, no, because that came out of left field. She just... Boom. Oh she was God. married to a dude. And what's <laughs> funny, she... Not only Nisi married to a guy, but she was telling, like, women, you got to suck a lot of dick to keep your man. You got to suck a That's lot of dick. So and I was sitting funny. there going... What were you thinking about, though, when you were sucking the dick? Hey, we got dicks. It's just different. <laughs> Playing Frank Ocean in the background. <laughs> Thanks so far ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about forever. <laughs> that's, that, that's that serenade. See, yeah. men, y'all don't realize, you wonder why women are going to women so more. It's because a lot of dudes keep messing up. And the more y'all mess up, there's always somebody... To cry on their shoulder. That, look, and I, that's us. I I agree. We're like, He's but if not a woman that likes bad. dick, she's gonna want some more dick eventually. Yeah, but we we kind of. You're there to fill in. Listen, you don't under if you catch the right lesbian. Not only do we give great head, some, but if you know how to strap it on correctly. It's a woman will forget. The it's only not thing, the same. I, 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 bro, you we have know real me. skin dildos. Like I could take your penis skin and make a dildo right now. Why would why would you do that? You know why how much you money call, we I could. Take your I try to get skin. that for my uncles. I was like, yo, we can come out with a Wayne's collection of Wayne's dildos. Cock? Wayne's, Wayne's cock. cock. Wayne's <laughs> cock. Like you want Maul in the show? You don't know who tonight. it is. There's Ooh, so many want? of us. Ah! Tina's gonna dissect. <laughs> okay. What kind of skin is it? Make sure you drink pineapple juice. <laughs> it's gonna taste better. <laughs> Not enough. This conversation was way better than the stand-up said, stories. <laughs> we, should, we should start talking about eating puss earlier. <laughs> Turn a shate into a sex symbol. It's coming down. Wow. Yes. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. Oh, I appreciate it. You got any dates coming good? up? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, in my crib, starting mid. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's I'm building a studio in my studio. Oh, okay. So I'm doing live stream yeah, shows. building a studio in my studio. <laughs> yeah, I have a live stream uh, show coming and all that stuff. So just follow me on Facebook. All right, gotta get you monetized. C W A Y A N S. Well, why are you thinking about it? Because uh, I'm a slow smeller. Got a GED. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. I man. appreciate it. Go Bingos. There you go. Close that motherfucker out. <laughs> <laughs>